Finally, a devlog. Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since my last devlog. I wish I could say that I have worked a lot on the game and you will see a lot of progress there, but no. Originally I thought this was because I was too caught up in other stuff, like making more content on YouTube. But later I realized that I just needed time to recharge, get some new ideas and inspiration. I've already worked for 3 months on this game with almost no breaks, mixing that up with my university studies and making videos. Pretty crazy, huh? So it was time to slow down and enjoy the life. By the way, I am planning on making a video on time management for game devs and others who have a lot on their plates. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, this is your chance. Click that red button and get a lot of useful and interesting content from me. Also, like this video so more people can see it. And now, let's get to the video. My name is Tamara and welcome to the first episode of the season 2 of my devlog series about a fantasy town simulation game Lost in Athelidus. I see a lot of new people subscribing to my channel, so if you're new here, Lost in Athelidus is a passion project of mine. I wanted to develop it for a while, but only this year I was able to get down to work. This is going to be a city builder with a special story filled with magic. You can watch all the previous episodes here. In this video you will see the development of a farming system for my game. Also, I have some great news for you. Now every new version of the game will be available to download exclusively for my supporters on Patreon. It's still got some bugs and only the PC version will be available, but hey, you can totally play it. And it will even get more interesting with new episodes. This season is completely dedicated to the activities you can do around the town. Let's start right where we left off, on the final episode of the first season, in which I announced that the game was available to playtest. By the way, it's still available and you can play it right after you watch this video. Link is in the description. After publishing that version I received a few very helpful comments about the bugs, gameplay and how to make the game more interesting. I want to personally thank these people, David Kaufman and Ely and Levy, for writing such detailed comments about the game. They really helped me to fix some things and get new ideas about what I can add. So thank you, I really appreciate the feedback. Before getting into programming I did some planning and figured out which graphics I needed. I found this cornfield with a Photoshop file where I can access each separate layer. It was in the standard isometric projection, which you can find in engineering drawings, but isometric game graphics usually use a 2 to 1 ratio for this projection, so I had to scale it a little bit. I know this because I made a video about 3 ways to make an isometric game. If you want to make an isometric game like Leah, you can watch it here. As I usually do with any new objects in the game, I imported this one and made it possible to place on the map. But now it is just a patch of soil that doesn't do anything. Next, I made the UI for the crops. It will function similar to the Heyday version, where you click on a field and get a list of crops that you can plant. You can drag a crop around and if it intersects a field, it will be planted. I put this panel into the game, but it was only instantiated above the field and nothing more. At this point I had to rework the object interaction system. I used to have everything in the update method of my town manager. But now I have everything handled by the objects themselves. I think it comes with experience. I once came up with the approach I was using and thought it was good, but after some time I became more proficient, learned about some other Unity methods and got a new idea on how to make the system. Now it works like this. On mouse enter a tag is shown above an object and therefore when it exits the tag disappears. But if you click on it, a different window is displayed and the object becomes insensitive to the mouse enter. To get rid of the window you can click anywhere else. I also implemented the crop dragging which was very easy because I already had the necessary script for this. In fact, a lot of things that I did to implement farming were easy. I have already done them at some point in my game, handled the bugs and the code was ready to use. Of course, there were still some problems, but mostly because I was a bit forgetful. Then I decided to implement something that my subscriber suggested, a tooltip. Turns out it comes really handy in this farming mechanic. There is no place to write a name of a crop, but the player still needs to know it somehow. Next up is planting crops. For this one I used the approach that I had for the object interaction system before I changed it. Now I have to implement the growing. Again, I reused the code from my other timed event. I also have a tutorial on this topic, so you can check it out. 
Collecting mechanic works the same way as the planting, but it calls a different method. And now, something interesting to do in the game. But first, I made a separate tab in the storage for the resources, which is also a suggestion one of you made. I added a button to the storage item prefab, so now you can earn some game currency from selling the crops that you've grown. Before we get to the final look of the game, let's talk about bugs. Remember I said I got comments about the bugs? I fixed some of them. The one thing I want to mention is why the character was not moving if the road was present on the map. The thing is, I usually had the same map for all my tests. The character was always on the road. But when you played the game, you created your own maps, and after the character teleported to the road, she was never programmed to continue after that. That's why she didn't move. Another thing that I want to talk about is user input propagating through the UI panels. Really annoying, I might say. I couldn't solve this problem the easy way, checking the event system with the method is pointer over game object, so every time that I have a full screen window that is supposed to cover everything, I just attach a small script that disables the camera pan zoom script. But this is not everything that I have to say. At the beginning of my development I thought that Leia will be a mobile game. I mostly tested my builds on a phone, handled touch input, etc. Now, when I made the farming mechanic, I got a really bad bug where I can't really plant anything because the planting window just disappears as soon as I touch it. It is supposed to do so if you click anywhere not on the selected field, but this doesn't include the UI clicks. Anyway, I wanted to ask you, if you worked with mobile input or have some resources about it, leave it in the comments. It would really help me get to the mobile version of the game. This is how the game looks now, a fully functioning planting mechanic. You can plant, harvest and sell. And this is it for this episode. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel to see more game dev content, like tutorials, tips and devlogs. See you soon! Bye!